Well, Mondays have been considered as the most boring day during the days of Monday. Well, here in DWZ, we intend to keep it more entertaining for everyone so you won't get bored on a Monday. So today, I will be doing making two reviews. The first one is from All Japan Pro Wrestling with Day 5 of the Giant Series. This one only features only two championship matches. The AJPW Junior Heavyweight title will be defended. El Lindemann defends it against a former champion, Hikaru Sato. And of course, the Triple Crown Championship is defended as well as Oyagi defends it against Honda. And then of course, we move on with Pro Wrestling Noah with Grand Ship in Nagoya, which took place just recently. This one features all their championships. We're talking about the GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles, the, hev the Junior Heavyweight Championship Tag Team titles, the National Championship, and of course, the top title, the GHC Heavyweight Championship. And of course, we got some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what the events promotions are throwing out, who's booked, what matches are set, any wrestlers who are departing or signed with any promotion in the world, any injured wrestlers, and other special things going on. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jim right here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is where we do a lot of daily reviews from various promotions all over the world. Not only here in the States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world, especially if countries you think the pro wrestling is not as big, but is growing. We also do some DWZ discussions, more news updates, also some news updates, alerts, the Unagi Sayako watch. If you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews. And of course, if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button. And of course, if you want to leave a comment down below where we see it. So, let's begin with our very first review. This is from the Japanese promotion, All Japan Pro Wrestling. We're in date. We had this happen back on the 22nd of September in Corkin Hall. And this is day five of the Giants series. Now, let's begin from start to finish. Our first match is tag team action. We got Blackman Suri teaming up with GTO's uh, Bla uh, Ren Ayabe. They take on Yoshi Tatsu and, of course, veteran and legend uh, Ozamu Nishimura. Now you probably can guess that oh, uh, since they have a veteran wrestler, maybe um, it's going to be an advantage. Well, um, Nishimura is a legend, and of course, many wrestlers have their, were influenced by him uh, during this current generation. But however, it was of course um, um, Nishimura who picked up the win when he applied a somewhat of an octopus submission onto Black Mansuri, forcing him to tap out. Next up, we have uh, the guys from Gleet, Kaz Hayashi, Jack Cartwheel, and of course, the current G-Rex champion, T-Hawk. They take on the members of Voodoo Murders, consistent of Toshizo, Jun Saito, and Rei Sato. Now, of course, like any other match, the Voodoo Murders like to attack their opponents right after the bell rings to send a direct message that they are the dominant youth faction within their promotion. But however, that's always been the problem. But the X factor of this match has been, of course, Toshizo. Thanks to, of course, Jack Cartwheel, who picked up the win when he applied a corkscrew flip. And boom, one, two, three, it's over. I mean, it's too bad that he did not pin any of the Saito Bros. Since they are the current G-Infinity champions. They would have found a way to beat them, reclaim those belts, take them back to Glee. That's something I would have expected. 
Next match, we have another um, tag team match. We have Koji Iwamoto teaming up with Noah's and very own and the leader of Real, Hideki Suzuki. They take on the members of Zenichi Shin Jidai, consisting of Yuma Anzai and, of course, Shuji, uh, Shuji Ishikawa. Now, this is a very interesting match because, of course, um, of course, I, like I said before, Suzuki is not a, what is not part of all Japan, but you know he plays pretty well. But however, in this particular match, it was, um, of course, an octopus maneuver uh, by um, by Suzuki. Well, hold on, let me get that back. It wasn't a, an octopus by Nishimuri to Black Mansuri. It was a black backslide. My bad. Backslide with the first match. Uh, the third match, it was an octopus. Sorry, my writing's a little messed up here. Uh, but it was, of course, an octopus submission by Suzuki to Anzai. And Anzai had no other choice but to tap out as well. So it's pretty straightforward uh, submission, that. Then we got more members of the Shinji... Um, Zenjinchi uh, Shinji Dai, consistent of Azuki Oyogi, Rising Hayato, and Kenta Miyahara. They take on Nariki Doi. Uh, Kudo, Omori, and of course Minoru Suzuki. Now these three guys, Suzuki, Doi, and Omori, they have been shown what a, uh, a very cohesive unit, but no name. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do have a name, even though the Suzuki goon can is basically Minoru Suzuki. But um, it was a pretty good match. It was of course Omori who picked up the win on to Aoyagi, which is very straightforward. But it was fun. Now, our next match, we have, of course, guys coming in from DDT Pro Wrestling. We have Rukiga, uh, Yuya, Koroku, and, of course, Yuki Naya. They take on the guys of Ryo Inoue and the members of Evolution, Dan Tamara and Suwama. Now, the only reason the guys from DDT are came out, apparently, uh, recently, um, y Yuki Naya has some issues towards Suwama, so he got into his face. So it became a little bit of a brawl between those two. But nevertheless, uh, it did went in that fashion. Uh, but in this case, it was, um, who was it? It was a Death Valley driver uh, by Tamara to um, Rukigu, uh, Rikuga that picked, the, pick, uh, picked up the win for himself and the rest of his team. It was a pretty good one, I have to say. Nice, nice job. Now, this is one of two championship matches we're going to be coming in right now. This is for the All Japan Pro Wrestling World Junior Heavyweight title. The challenger is Hikaru Satu, uh, challenging El Lindemann from Glee. Now, Hikaru Satu has been the champion. Now, as you know, we've been seeing recent times where wrestlers from Glee and All Japan, they've been, of course, meeting up with each other. However, um, the, the Junior Heavyweight title has been in the possession of a Linda man, and I know Hikaru Satu would definitely would def want to get that title back, bring it back home to all Japan. I thought it would have been e simpler to see because we know that Hikaru Satu has, is a master of technician. He has a bit of a submission background, which of course um, overpowers, kind of would uh, felt to the powerness of El Linda man. If you guys seen El Linda man, he may be small, but the dude is a strong SOB for his size. But of course, it was. A Insight Cradle, which is a much easier, unexpected move by El Lindemann in order to retain the title. So, I did not expect that from him, but it was very effective to put Hikaru Satu away and retain the title. Now, our main event is for the Triple Crown Championship. Now, the challenger is Ruki uh, Honda versus Yuma Aoyagi. Now, Honda won um, the road, the Royal Road Tournament not too long ago. They give him an opportunity to pick up a shot of the Triple Crown Championship. However, he has tasted gold before. He was a tag team champion with Shotaro. Um, I forgot what his name is. But anyway, he's been out for a while. But I have to say, this was a very interesting match. I think it was very powerful. The feeling, you know, because people were rooting for Honda to pick up the win. He seems like a very prominent wrestler that fans can get behind. But however, it was um, Yuma Oyagi who picked up the win and, and of course made the pinfall to Honda and retained the title. Now, however, as soon as Oyagi was doing his little promo, his teammate and tag partner and friend shows up 
and it doesn't take a genius to know why he was there so it's of course Kento Miyahara who issued a challenge for the Triple Crown Championship that's my best guess but uh, we'll see what happens I say it's going to be interesting to see those two team up the two those two will face off each other despite they're part of the same team with uh, Zenichi um, Shin uh, Jidai so I think that's going to be interesting to see uh, a showdown between those two so I think that's pretty much it what we have with All Japan so I say let's move on with Pro Wrestling Noah Okay, Pro Wrestling Noah with Grand Ship in Nagoya. Uh, this just recently took place this past Sunday, which is yesterday. Um, it features all the championship matches on the line. So that's going to be a real fun thing for all of us to watch. Now, let's get started. Our first match, well, is a pre-show. We have Taishi Ozawa, Stalin Rogers, uh, Sushi Kodoge, and uh, Akitoshi Saito. Now they take on Yu Owada. Hiroki, Daiki Inaba, and Mohamed Yane. Now, team leaders from both sides are part of the Funky Express. Saito and Yone are part of that. So, we have the same thing with Hiroki, Hiroki and Koroge on the opposite side. But I have to say it was a pretty good match. But in the end of this match, I can tell you that it was a... Um, an, um, Ivor, um, a very interesting match by uh, Sta uh, Roger Stallings. He picked up the win when he pinned Owada, and it was over right from there. So I thought, not, ba not bad, kid. Not bad. Now let's get to our opening uh, match of the card, uh, the main card. So we have Hajime Ohara and Shuji Kondo, formerly of Kondo. They got these guys to take on good-looking guys with Tadasuke and Yohei. Now, good-looking guys have been very popular team duo we've been seeing over time and of course i know that ohara who has issues towards um you know yohei is straightforward but however tadasuke is familiarized with both kondo and ohara because they were part of kondo but it doesn't change anything but in the end it was of course yohei with an amazing drop kick to the face to ohara picked up the win for the ghc so this is one match out of three the uh, GLG, the good looking guys, won. Next up, we got Kazuyuki um, Fujita, along with the members of Rael, consistent of Shohi Toniguchi and uh, Hideki Suzuki. They take on Manabu Soya, Masakita Miya, and Takashi Sugiura. Now, here's an interesting factor of this match Manabu Soya and Mi Masa. Kiremiya, they were both part of Kondo, Congo along with Kendo. It was very interesting how these two have uh, came up. However, I don't know how these two will get along because it was Kiremiya who, ma Ki Kiremiya who made the choice to leave. But I have to say they seemed to work pretty well, especially in this match. But it was Manabu Soya who picked up the win onto, um, who was it? Onto Taniguchi when he applied the jumping DDT. It was over. But the most interesting development is what happened afterwards. Um, in the match, Soya and Manabu Soya called out Daik, um, Daiki Inaba into the ring. So they shook hands, but for some odd reason, Manabu Soya and Masa Kiremiya shook hands as well. So the obvious question does tell, even the commentators mentioned this, the English commentators to be exact, are we going to see a brand new unit with these three men? It's a possibility. I mean, it's not uncommon, but it's been known that sometimes, like, these new units form in the, in the form of a handshake. So, we'll see what happens as uh, we progress in Pro Wrestling Noah in the next couple of weeks or so. Now, our our next match, we have, of course, Junta Miyawaki taking on Daga. Um, as you know, Junta Miyawaki is a homegrown Pro Wrestling Noah. He faces an outsider. Daga, but Daga brought his viciousness into the ring that allowed him to pick up the win. However, he did apply a knees to the face onto Miyawaki to pick up the win. In our next match, we have Adam Brooks teaming up with Katsuhiko Nakajima. They take on Lance um, Noai and Keno. Now, here's an interesting thing. 
this will be the last time we'll see Adam Brooks and Lance uh, Noai, who this is will be their send-off match. This will be the last time we see those two in Noah. Uh, we don't know if they will be come back or if Noah does have an interest in them. I mean, you got to know this. When you're in Japan for a foreign wrestler outside of Japan, you know you want to give a good impression. I'm sure many fans are impressed by these guys. But it was a pretty good match, I have to say. But in the end of this match, it was Keno with the diving foot stomp onto Adam Brooks to pick up the win just like that. Now, our next match, we have Rohi Oiwa, Eita, and Kato Kiyomiya taking on um, Leo, um, Naomichi Marifuji, Yoshinari Ogawa, and Leona. Now, of course, the X factor of this match is Eita versus Ogawa and Leona, who've been stabbing him in the back and all this other stuff. But however, another factor has been added into this match is Rohe Oiwa, who is a, one of the a formerly a young line who a recently graduate of the New Japan Dojo, uh, is an excursion on, or should I say, on loan to Pro Wrestling Noah, thanks to, of course, Kiyomiya. Now, of course, this leads to a feud, might a potential feud between Mari Fuji and Oiwa. But in the end of this match, it was, of course, Leona, who has his issues towards Eita, refuses to listen to the ref due to the fact that he has his problems with them. But the last thing he did is disqualify himself by tossing the ref to the other side of the ring. And the result of the disqualification, it became a brawl outside me and Mari Fuji to Oiwa, Keito Kimi Ogawa. The whole thing was going bizarre. So that pre pretty much ended right there for everyone. Now let's begin with the with the championship matches. Our first one is the GHC Tag Team Championship. Uh, this is between GLG, good looking guys, uh, Anthony Green and Jack Morse. They take on the guys from Rail, consistent of Timothy Thatcher and Saxon Huxley. Now one thing that was very interesting about this match is of course it was Anthony Green who picked up the win against Rail. But however, this is very uh, a strong, powerful match. But however, um, Timothy Thatcher will do great links to ensure to to break the body and spirit of his of his opponents in order to ensure that they actually remain that way. However, it did not stop. Even Hideki Suzuki, the leader of Rail, got himself involved in this, trying to ensure that the mat the title stayed. But however, it did not end that way. It was ja uh, of course it was Jack Morris who picked up the win with the Jack Driver on two. Thatcher, one, two, three, brand new GHC heavyweight tag team champions. I think that now this is two for three out of the three matches that GLG gets win. All we have left is the leader, Jack Lee, Jake Lee, taking on, of course, um, Go Shiozaki. We'll get to that in a bit. Now, our next match, this is the, the GLG junior heavyweight tag team titles that have been recently vacant. Now, I don't know what's the significance. I did not even know they were vacant. But uh, it was. So we have, of course, Alejandro teaming up with Ninja Mac, who is a former uh, GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion. They take on, of course, the two brothers from Mexico. We're talking about Dragon Bane and his brother Alpha Wolf. Now, here's the interesting factor. All three of these, these two brothers, Dragon and Alpha, they're both three times. They're currently holding three championship matches, three titles. In the tag team divisions in Mexico, if they walk away with this match, that means they have four. So I have to say it was a pretty amazing match. The determination to not only win Japanese gold but also to win the whole thing. I have to say I was very impressed by the whole thing. But it was in fact uh, Dragon Bane who picked up the win by pinning Alejandro, and that means they go home with four belts to Mexico. So uh, I can't wait to see what they're gonna do. So, it's, it's great for them. Now, our next match, this is the GHC National Championship. Uh, on commentary, we have Nosawa Rangai, who, of course, recently retired. But he is familiarized with these wrestlers that are facing off. Psycho Clown versus the champion, Hijo de, Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr. Now, these two guys are enemies by family blood feud. Now, if you remember the history I talked about, uh, it was Psycho Clown who unmasked his own his father, 
uh, unmask Dr. Wagner Jr. a couple years back. I know Ijo hasn't forgotten. So this is a way for Psycho Clown to get into his head and saying, Hey, I took your dad's mask. I'm going to take your belt from you. So that is straightforward. But you can tell that that always haunted him in every way possible. But in the end, you probably... But however, of course, um, Psycho Clown was being disrespectful by trying to rip off the mask of the, of Wagner in order to show his face. But however, Wagner decided to repeat the same process. But the ref stopped him. But however, ref did not see what happened next. Wagner actually removed his mask remove Psycho Clown's mask and pin him one, when he applied the Michinuku driver. One, two, three, retain the title. So, but however, Psycho Clown did mention in a post comment, he will be back for that title one way or another. So we'll see what happens down the line. Now for our next match, this is for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship. Um, we have Seki Yoshioka uh, taking on Hayata. Now these two guys are no strangers to each other. They were part of the of the faction known as Stinger that actually ruled the entire junior heavyweight division in Pro Wrestling Noah. But now they're no longer with the group. Uh, Yoshioka ended up going with, of course, uh, with the Noah Juniors. Then after that, um, Hayata is no longer no longer trusts Ogawa for whatever reason or anybody from the Stinger. But he has proven why he is one of the most dominating wrestlers in the junior heavyweight division but it did a lot but it was a pretty awesome match now it seems like Yoshioka was could have won this match but in the end it was Hayata with a pinfall onto Yoshioka to pick up the win however in post match Hayata was attacked from behind from none other than the former uh, GHC junior heavyweight tag team champion um, Daga and it doesn't take a genius why he was there so uh, he issued the challenge for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship. I'm sure he'll bring that back to Stinger, and that's going to be very interesting to see. Now, our main event, uh, Keno is present for this um, particular match. Uh, we have, of course, for the GHC Heavyweight Championship, we have the challenger and the winner of the N1 victory, Go Shiozaki, taking on Jake Lee, the champion. Another good match. Now, Jake Lee, Lee has proven why he is the dominant wrestler and why he is the top dude in the whole uh in all of noah and it's pretty interesting but however i wouldn't expect it you probably would have thought that Joe, go shiozaki will be able to um regain the title and wants himself to call himself noah but in the end it was the big boot by jake lee to pick up the win so jake lee is happy to retain but there is one thing that's still stuck on his mind now keep in mind i did state it he was undefeated and he was unbeatable. However, there was one match, one match that haunted him during the N1 victory that made him lose. And that is, of course, the next challenger he nominates. And that is, of course, the badass himself, Keno. So, of course, Keno will accept the challenge because he wants to make, has a better future for Noah. He's always been a loyal subject to the promotion. So, we'll see what happens because... Keno is very protective of the promotion, but I can't wait when that match is set. So I think that's pretty much it what we have for Pro Wrestling Noah. I believe it's time to do our final thing, and that is news updates. Welcome to our news updates. Now, most of our, um, there'll be some, uh, as you know, we had some WWE releases back on September 22nd, which was very unexpected. Uh, one of these um, release, uh, WWE releases uh, participants, Rick Boggs, uh, saying that he claimed that the reason he was let go was because of Vince McMahon when he left WWE. So he felt that w uh, since Vince left the, the promotion, uh, it was all his fault, so he basically claiming that Vince leaving WWE killed his career. Now, I don't know if that is true or not, but what do you guys think? I mean, I feel like he's over-exaggerating too much, you know, but we'll see. Uh, now, speaking of releases, um, Matt Hardy on his podcast talked about 
three recent released wrestlers that he strongly believes that should make their way to uh, AEW. And these are the names he thought of. Uh, Shelton Benjamin, uh, Dolph Ziggler, and Mustafa Ali. Now, he did stated this. This is what he posted. Uh, this is what he said on his... Uh, that was he said let me what he quoted let me pull it up real quick for all of you uh there it is you could see three names i just mentioned shelton benjamin i could see dolph ziggler i could see mustafa ali i could see all those guys doing something there i could go back and look at my list so what do you guys think do you think um these three guys that he mentioned should be making their way to aw so you guys tell me because i feel like I feel that they do can bring something to the table, but that's up to them if they can do it. I feel like they are a valuable asset, but will Tony Khan take them? That's the good question. Now, as I reviewed uh, recently, uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, uh, Katsuhiko Nagajima, it was announced that he will be terminating his contract with Noah by the end of this month of September. But however, they did state that he does have two final matches in October. Uh, the first one is on the 20th in Cork and Hall, and of course the 28th of October in Fukuoka. So I don't know what's the reasons of his leaving, but I wouldn't be surprised if he decides to go to New Japan, because that's something I'm sure many people would definitely want to see. Now an interesting tweet was posted by none other than the death machine, Sammy Callan. He said this, September 30th, free agent. Um, does this mean that he is no longer going to be with Impact Wrestling once we get to that day? Well, we'll find out. I mean, we'll see what happens till then. I know he runs a promotion, rest, uh, Wrestling Revolver. I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, works on that full time. But like I said, we will see. Now, Spark Yoshi Perusa has announced for an upcoming match. And it's a title match for the Rising West show on the 11th of October. Uh, Ram Kaicho, who is the Spark Yoshi Pacific Champion, defends her belt against the pink-drained Alex Gracia. So that's another match that was announced. I'm sure we'll be hearing more matches along the way. House of Glory has announced a debut for the Friday the 13th event on October 13th. Uh, Layla Gray, who you guys may have seen on AEW and um, Ring of Honor, will be making her debut as well real soon so i'm so excited to see that now as you all know uh prestige wrestling and tokyo super wrestling are has are now in a working relationship for their upcoming uh event in december the combat princess usa that will take place on the 12th i mean on the 14th of december this is the names they announced who will be participating maki ito tail valkyrie mizuki masha slamovich Killer Kelly, Miu Yamashita, Sandra Moon, Rika Tatsumi, and Miu Wanabe. But more names will be announced, so I can't wait to see who else is going to be. I know they cannot bring the entirety of the roster, but we'll see what happens until then. Now, speaking of WWE releases, there was one particular rest of person, uh, if you guys may have heard, named Alexis Gray. Uh, uh, sadly, she has never made her in-ring debut since being with the company. Uh, she was amongst those wrestlers that were released on September 21st. Uh, you know, this is what she had to say. Because apparently, she knew that the writing was on the wall when the merger was happening. So this is what she said. I think a lot of us have that mindset personally that we did all thought in the back of our mind. Because it was so new, I kind of did not expect it that maybe I was part of the people that would get laid off. When I did get the call, it was like baffling to me. I, I had a plan. I felt like things were finally making sense in the company. I felt that like I understood what they were requesting of us. Just to us off immediately is I understand it. It was a lot. It's crazy. Nothing is telling me to not to continue. Nothing is telling me not to pursue this and see where I can go. I generally don't believe that being with W would have made me successful i believe that what i was bringing would have made a company successful so she realized so she had a feeling that her that she could be laid off at some point but it did but of course um like i said before she never had her in-ring debut and this is what she said 
I was speaking to the coaches about more doing more live events. I feel that's where I was at my training. Obviously, we didn't get to that point. Sadly, I had to explain and put in the words. It was easier for me to show everyone. It's going to be a better uh, better for me to grind it because I understand how people want to be in my position. The opportunity is especially special and so big. The fact that the door is not closed. Let me uh, let me not get upset for it. Let me find a different way to get where I want to go just to take a different route. Now, of course, she never got that opportunity to, of course, uh, to debut. However, she people did some someone did ask her. Uh, is there any sign that she's going to be quitting? And this is what she respect. Currently, I'm going to find a wrestling school. I'm not going to stop. I have to show you guys that I look like in, in that ring. That's probably the main thing that's heavy in my heart. The fact that I had so much planned and now it's more postponed. That wait is going to be worth it. The more I wait, the more I the ideas I get. The more anxious, excited and passionate I get about the sport I'm looking forward to the future reaching out to a lot of the ladies in wrestling that tweet was so beneficial because it's connecting me with so many people so many women and companies have reached out so I'm grateful it even made more passionate out of this uh, situation came good I'm going to accept that it feel it right now She's not going to give up on wrestling. She will find a wrestling school. Um, I'm sure that there are people that have been reaching out to her and see what they can do. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath if she'll be going to AEW. I mean, she hasn't had the necessary experience just yet. But I'm very happy to hear that she's keeping her spirit high, that she's not going to give up on what she is pursuing. And I wish her nothing for best luck. And I think all of you should do the same thing. So I will keep tabs on her from here on out see how she's progressing now uh, uh, this was a last minute thing that I just added because as soon as before I started um, a friend of mine tweeted this for me now recently if you guys may have been aware um, Waka Tsukiyama acted a little strange um, if you guys don't know what I mean let me put this video for you This is from the Stardom uh, Twitter and uh, YouTube channel. Now, you can ask me this question, what the hell does this mean? What, what's up with her? Well, this is where I got this the last minute before I started doing this for you guys. It appears that Waka set up a show called Moon Dumb. And this is going to come out on the 4th of October. And there's going to be matches. And this is going to take place at the same venue where um, World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana takes place. Um, I, I'm sure Waka has some connections. I know she wrestled there before she ever got signed with uh, Stardom. Uh, she already this They already announced for three matches that will be involved. Um... Saya Ida versus Izuki Aoyoki. Then we have Hanan teaming up with, of course, Waka Tsukiyama. They take on Yuko Sakurai and Yuna Mizumori. Very interesting. Um, Yuki Takase and Ami Suri will team up and they will face against 
Micah and Aruka Umesaki. And of course, just later on, they announced that Momo Kogo will be the uh, commentary in the in will be doing English commentary. Uh, of course, you know Momo and Waka are both English speakers, and I'm sure uh, she would like to have a English speaker involved in this whole thing. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to see it, uh, but I will keep tabs of it. So if you guys are looking for it, uh, you can find for more information on the um, either look on Waka's. Uh, Twitter page or Stardom's page, however you want to do it. And I think that's pretty much it for today. So I think it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, we have Tuesday Wrestling with, of course, uh, NWA Power and NXT. Now, I haven't decided if there will be anything before that. I know I haven't seen any of the recent GCW events uh, from their UK tour. And, of course, they're just recently in Germany. So we'll see what happens until then. But for now, we'll just leave things as it is. And we'll see what happens for the next episode. But for now, I will see you guys in the next DW time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.